Hi, welcome to What the Flick, where sometimes we see the movies and sometimes we don't see the movies. Um, I saw this next one and so did Ben. Two I'm, of us <laughs> will always see the movies. Right. Yeah. Marsha's is going to show up here and talk about something we haven't seen. Right. Not yet, but that's coming. That's coming real soon. I'm Christy. That's Ben. That's Matt. Ben is back from his many adventures. And we're going to talk about the documentary Project Nim, which Matt has not seen, but it's going to expound upon intelligently nonetheless. Right. This is about some, I think it's about some gorillas that they were doing experiments on and they get out and there's, and, no. but it's like the project secret of NIM, but it's with gorilla, no. 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 I thought, wouldn't it be exciting to communicate with a chimp and find out what it was thinking? So why not teach him sign language? And that's essentially why I started Project NIM. I know nothing about chimpanzees. Herb wanted me to take Nim into my home as if he were a child. The fact that we could share language with an animal seemed very radical at that time. There was no family discussion. It was just, oh, we're having a chimp. We're going to teach a sign language. Nobody in the house really was fluent in sign language. Everything was about treating him like a human being. He liked alcohol. He loved driving fast in cars. I breastfed him for a couple of months. It seemed completely natural. I couldn't believe it. It was the 70s. Herb wanted a schedule and charted progress. I didn't supply that. There was utter chaos. There were no journals. There were no logbooks. This was a scientific project. I had an implicit faith that Nim would learn signs. I just mapped out a teaching plan for Nim, and I did it. Nim was learning signs rapidly. They're going up, 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 up. I could see I was succeeding. There was all this excitement and hype about the project. I had a relationship with a chimpanzee, and I had conversations with an species. Him, gone from being this meek little huggable toy to a robust young chimpanzee. He's going to be big, five to six times the strength of a man. He's got fangs. This is 37 stitches. In that sense, he was becoming more chimp-like. It didn't seem to be a cause for alarm. I had never regarded him as a child. I regarded him as a scientific project. Nobody keeps a chimp for more than five years. I had the best time of my life. I've never had such a good time except maybe at a Grateful Dead show. The reality of it is it's not a doll, it's not a toy, it's not a human, it's a chimp. It's no, but I remember it. reading about this, and this was one of the first of the primates that had been taught sign language, and it was a big to-do, and whether or not, you know, there was a lot of controversy as to whether or not this chimp actually had acquired language or was just kind of repeating tricks to get food and rewards. It's a great, whatever. that's like a, there, it is an incredibly emotional movie. It's very, oh, it's hard it's to very watch. visceral, very visceral film. It's really good. Um, but uh, one of the things that you'll sort of, I think, change your mind on often as you watch it, or at least change your thought process on throughout that, is whether this chimp is learning to sign at all. Or he's just mimicking as or he's just mimicking. to get And I go back, I went back and forth, like I'd make up my mind, and then I came to a definitive conclusion at the end, which I will not ruin for mm -hmm. you, but at the end I felt very strongly one way, but it it went, and, and finally they brought it up at the end. But the manner in which this, ch the emotional part of this, the fact that they take this chimp, rip it away from its mother in the very beginning of the film, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's raised by a series of well-meaning people who keep giving it away, sort of, essentially. Well, that's one when of the they're, questions. When they're, when they're done with it. That's one of the questions, which you, you were wondering whether the learning actually takes place. I kept questioning who here means well and who doesn't. Because they, James Marsh, who also directed Man on Wire, won which an Oscar the, for that. one of the great documentaries which, which was of great, all time. Which yeah. was great. Um, let's them all speak for themselves. And let's us all determine what we think Yes. based on their own recollections of what happened. And, and you know, decades later, they look back with fondness and with a lot of regret. Um, but I kept changing my mind as to who here is good, who has altruistic intentions, who was just out for glory. So, yes, I agree. When I said well-meaning, uh, well-meaning, uh, in fact, that's just wrong. Some of mm -hmm. them, they all liked the chimp right. at he's, various he's points. They all, yeah. they all connected with him, but some are better people than others. Right, and he's cute, and, and you want to project all those human characteristics onto him, and they put mm. him in these little diapers and cute little 70s polyester leisure suits, but he's an animal, and... He smokes weed. He does, he, he drinks beer and smokes pot, but, yeah. but he's an animal, and those instincts come out, and as they 
become increasingly dangerous, these people realize that they are way in over their heads. And uh, you know, it's heartbreaking as as a mother, especially, to watch yep. this creature just get bumped from one person to the next and feel lost and abandoned. And I, yeah, because yeah. while they may th it may be foolish to treat him like a human, it is not foolish to treat him with great empathy and to recognize that many of the same emotions that we have, sure. he obviously has. Right. And he's he had family and abandonment belonging. and right. wanting to be a part of something and loving the people around him and needing and so forth. And he had all that. And yeah, so the guy who ran the experiment, what's his name, Herb Ter Herbert Terrace. At Columbia. Still is there. He, yeah. Well, he does this because he did this when he was, uh, I guess, in his day, when he was a big shot nailing uh, uh, co-eds co <laughs> at Columbia. He had a mustache, and he did this, I guess, a couple right. of times. It was a little slick move he had. And so James Marsh, I apparently asked him to do it. Yeah. And he did it. To introduce himself. To introduce himself. But like, he has no self-awareness and does not realize none, that to this day none. he comes off like a total dick. He comes oh, off like he's arrogant. Douche. He's learned nothing. Oh, my God. And yeah. If the rest of them have all learned, okay, we right. made mistakes, mm -hmm. he's Some, still emboldened completely. Totally. doesn't get it yeah. in any way. But it, it's mm -hmm. fascinating so, and, yeah. Does, so he does he claim that... He taught the chimp to speak and taught language. To yes or no? I don't want to give that yeah, away either. Because he, he changes his mind. He's not an idiot, but he uh, he is clueless. He yeah. has no sort of he has no personal connection to things or people or apes. Right. And they've <laughs> all slept with each other. Like a lot of it is like they're all smoking pot and they're all having sex with each other because it's the seventies. And there are a couple of uncomfortable uh, moments of sexualized talk regarding Nim. One, of the, one of the ladies breastfeeds him. Yeah. And like he examines her crotch, and she's like, "I didn't <laughs> think it was sexual." And you're like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> it's just wrong. Uh, yeah, James but... Marsh knows how to tell a story, and knows how to make us feel, and knows how to make us understand that characters in a documentary feel like characters in a film. Like he makes them sort of, I don't know. I was very impressed. Let by them speak it. for themselves, and yep. the story will tell us. Uh, anyway, it's definitely worth seeing. What did you give it? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yep. There you go. So I guess that's eight and a half. Eight point. I'm gonna give it an eight point six. Just to make this difficult. <laughs> no, eight and a half. A uh, uh, very strong rating for uh, Project Name. It's uh, certainly uh, uh, well, probably one of the best documentaries yeah. you'll see this year. Yeah, it's out in New York and L.A. It's going wider this week, so go find it.